it's been a while since I've been behind enough of my videos where I've needed to where a current event thing has happened and I've been able to be right on top of it and do a thing do a video on the topic. So, um E3 is dead for really reals. In fact, I may have done this joke last time we talked about this, but it does certainly seem that this time it's not only merely dead, it's really most sincerely dead. Sorry, the only, only real way I can get the right variation quaver to my voice to pull it off. Um, I'm not the trained vocalist who could do who could do that naturally. I apologize. So, with that in mind, um, what are my thoughts on the thing, considering that my... I use E3 as my anniversary marker for when I've started doing my Breaking It All Down videos since I started doing Breaking It All Down proper as E3 sort of best and worst videos. Um, as far as the first ones that I did when I did my transition from my doing my uh, quality control videos when I was doing my written recaps of the Tinder Power Retrospectives to my... To now I'm going to just do full breaking all down edited videos and all of that. Or not even just edited, but just doing the, the longer form videos and standalone content. Well... To a degree, E3 was one of the things where at some point I wanted to be able to go to E3. Um in a professional capacity. I wanted to be able to go to E3, to, to hit a point in doing my content and that sort of thing, where I could go to E3, where I, was, where I wasn't just going to E3 as like a tourist, so to speak. They'll certainly probably agree with that. But in a professional capacity where I could theoretically be able to schedule, to, we'll have, not, not be able to, but we'll have scheduled appointments in advance to see games that studios were showing off and that sort of thing. And I realized that like content on this channel in terms of video game reviews is not like very heavy on the video game reviews. I do more film reviews. I do more book reviews, that sort of thing. Um, but I do certainly do a fair amount of let's play content though. That's going to shift gears once, uh, I'm done with doing the Tactics Ogre world where Let's Plays will go off to their own channel. But still, I enjoy being able to take, not take part as a wrong term, but appreciate E3 from afar. And like when I started this channel, Game Trailers was still a thing as for like their own like website. And I would, when E3 came around, in addition to watch and doing like just do watching the late night giant bomb coverage, which there's a site that's also changed a lot over the years. Um, I'd be parked out on game trailers, watching all the game trailers, watching all the released gameplay footage and B roll that they put out or on the floor gameplay demos of all these games and giving my, and just basically sit there on the computer. Um, when I wasn't at work, or doing studying for classes, or even something like having in the background while I was studying for classes, and I was working game my degree, and just looking at all these various games, like okay, like is this game going to be any good? Um, does this game show promise? Does this game catch my interest? And sometimes a game would come up that would say, oh, all right, where I would go, oh hey, that looks really cool, but not a lot of people were talking about it, but because I'm so focused on game trailers, I could just kind of go, okay, that um, I would some, sometimes catch something that would not necessarily grab the zeitgeist in the moment, but maybe later when the game came out would be, people would find interesting. And also I loved and certainly enjoyed um, watching the press briefings and so forth live. One of my first E3, like, or the first time I actually really paid attention to E3 was when GameSpot 
was started doing their started doing their first E3 cover, um, coverage and their live streams of the press briefings. And because like before then, certainly there have been E3, but e, there have definitely been E3s before they were doing that. Um, but at the time, I wasn't necessarily up on current consoles. Like I got an NES the year the N64 came out, or like a little before the N64 came out. And I was able to buy a whole bunch of games because people were still had N6, NES games in the stock, and I was able to grab those up on clearance. Um, that's actually kind of helped build up why I'm so into retro gaming as opposed to just uh, as opposed to like being on top of things. Is because the retro game console is the current systems were the ones that played at other people's houses. The things that I played at home were the games that were a little behind the curve, whether on and playing an, an NES when the N64 was out or playing DOS and early um, Windows games, often ones that didn't require PC acceleration because I never had a computer that had a PC accelerator card until uh, a, a graphics 3D accelerator card until much later, that sort of thing. So, So that those big E3 experiences by proxy through watching the stage shows and hearing the reactions from that, both in terms of the people commentating afterwards on the live streams or even eventually then later live and uh, as well as again, tapping into that fire hose of trailers as those became available that shaped a lot of perception of games and helped give me a sense of what was out there. So in one so in one respect, I'm bummed to see E3 go. On the other sense, I get it. E3, E3 now is not what it was then. E3 now is not what it was when Metal Gear Solid 2 was announced and they had the trailer during the E3 press conference for, I think it was Sony. And they also had it playing on loop on the show floor and you'd hear on, on the spot. And then was listening to started listening to podcasts uh, as those became a new medium again, through listening to the podcasts on GameSpot, listening to those podcasts and hearing them talking about seeing the trailer on loop on the show floor. I got this sense or I, 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 I got this sense of an energy that was there. And if I was to go to E3 now, if we had an E3 this year, of course, I don't think the energy would be present. Certainly when I talk, when, when I hear the game journalists I trust and talking about these past few E3s that they've been to, like pre-pandemic, there was always this sense on the show floor of like not as busy, not as not just in terms of appointments on the show floor, but also like just game demos on the show floor and that sort of thing. I don't know how much of this is um, the way that the, the, the way the development cycle of games has lengthened over time where like back in the Super Nintendo and PlayStation 1 era, you'd have a could have a fairly quick turnaround for those game for a uh, a game release. Those are both cats in my room for this video. Nope, just one. Um, on the one hand, you have that, but on the other, so there's there's that stretching out where you'll have Skyrim announced one announced, and then maybe wouldn't actually come out necessarily until several years later, and. That in fact, that release might get pushed back because staff has to put half a year into de putting into getting together the development resources to, or there's a way by setting aside development resources to put together that E3 tra E3 playable demo that vertical slice of gameplay. So arguably, you would have a situation where you'd have actual where where like the development time of a game if you're go if you're bringing a demo every year possibly getting dumped getting doubled so not good and i understand why you wouldn't want to do that S 
where I feel that energy has gone now is PAX, is the various Penny Arcade Expos. And tricky thing for me for this is like, I, like on one hand, PAX Prime, I'm in the Portland area. PAX Prime's in my backyard. And so certainly like, it's, a, well, it's on my list of places I like to go to. On the other hand, how to put this? By the time I started having jobs where I could seriously thinking about, okay, setting the money aside to go to PAX, we also we also hit a point of where, like, for example, for PAX, I can't buy a badge for the whole weekend or weekend pass anymore. I can buy individual days and hope I can get the whole weekend, which puts the point of, like, well, if the thing I want, panel I want to go to is on the day I can't get a pass for, then do I want to go? And not to mention, depending how on the line stuff works for PAX, with badges, um... Can I pick up my badges for the whole weekend at one day? Like, it's a bit more of a more complex mess than like some of the major conventions I've been I've been to, like a like a um, I mean, actually, Portland Retro Gaming Expo has become a major convention. So not just like Portland Retro Gaming Expo or my more local Kamora Con anime convention, but with like going to when I went when I went to a World Con, when I went to um, Western Con. Those were events where I just got a badge. Whether it was getting in line at the at the venue and picking up there or having it mailed to me, I just got a badge. And that simplified things tremendously. And I don't know for something like uh, PAX, like on one hand, I'd, I'd like to just go and kind of wing it, but have to, if I have to go through the like, depending on how the line stuff works, would be kind of a, a mess and ruin the and would impact the amount of time I get to spend doing the cool stuff. So we'll, I may go to PAX at some point, and that may be that may be. I mean, PAX, PAX is on one of my convention holy grails, but it's not as high up there as something like a. Like an Oticon, for example, or for a, a Gen Con or other tabletop gaming convention. So, I think the way to put it is that E3 now has been supplanted. E3 now is not what it once was, both in terms of its influence and in terms of. Um, being a showcase for games. If I go to if I go to a PAX, I could get a chance to get hands-on time with the game. Maybe it's playing a long line for a more popular game, but getting hands-on times with with games more readily, and they'll probably be games that are more likely to come out as opposed to an E3 where even have an appointment, it may not necessarily be a playable demo that I get much hands-on time with. So, and on PAX also, I'd probably get like at least an opportunity to interact with the developers to some extent, particularly for the um, indie indie games and ask some questions and stuff, depending on how the line is and all that sort of thing. So, I guess on the one hand to say is PAX was great. Not back, not back, not back, but E3, uh, pa PAX is great. PAX was great. And PAX as an event, because it has kind of orientated itself from the get, because it has been oriented from the beginning as a more open to the fan event as opposed to a business convention uh, or a business and press expo. PAX, I think, will have the staying power to stay strong and be a successful convention in the future. E3 started as the kind of, like, 
CES trade show that was that very much dependent on there are like, like which thrived before there was the internet and the ways and fast enough internet to get information out quickly in video and that sort of thing that way and for a chunk of time with the internet it was still able to maintain the right that sense of that balance of spectacle and um business where it presented a big show for the people at home who can't go but also have giving opportunities for press and that sort of thing get hands-on time. And now we're at a point where putting together streaming events and that sort of thing for the big announcements that would have been a E3 showcase is much less of a thing. And, and I will miss having a week or a weekend which is just all of the game news happens in like a big fire hose straight into your eyeballs or pick up like a three day, four day long blip vert of just video games streaming straight into your brain until it's about to explode. And I will miss that as admittedly someone who didn't have to go through all the work to cover it. And I do appreciate all the people who did have to go through that. And I completely understand and respect when they say that was kind of hell. It was a massive amount of overtime. I didn't get to see my family for a week leading for a week, several weeks leading up to it. And a few weeks afterwards, I get that. But I do, but on the other hand, now things are weirdly more complicated now because things drop whenever. However, and because of that, I think the ability for like the value, like good game reporting has been somewhat devalued because of that. Um, and good, like there will always be a place for good game media criticism, but to put it another way. In film, you have the big events that everyone goes to and everyone shows their movies at and all the reporters go to and that sort of thing. You get these hints of these big things that will come in the future. You get talking about, oh, can um, South by Southwest, uh, um, Sundance, the, the, the big film festivals, fantastic, and that sort of thing. Um, even like somewhat smaller film festival, HP Lovecraft Film Festival in Portland, Fantastic Fest, that sort of stuff where you get the murmurings of, oh yeah, I went to Fantastic Fest and saw this seemingly long forgotten made in Florida Taekwondo movie. And now it's gotten resurrected. It's gotten a new Blu-ray release and that sort of thing. And now I can get it. And, and, and you got to go check it out when it comes out. That and we have that for film. And while it is cliche to compare compare games with film, because in many in so many respects they're not, certain things of the way we talk about film are valuable and worth carrying over to games and. And I think in turn, the way that we present and get together about to to discuss them and see games and see films is also valuable. And I think there is still a place for that. At the present, I think that's shifting to PAX is possibly also South by Southwest. But E3, I think, was a very valuable part of that, the past. And... It is, it is not a irrevocable loss and not an irreplaceable loss, but it is a loss. So, I guess for my invocation to, uh, for my call to action, I guess for those who are watching this, 
What was the first E3 press conference you watched live? You watched live stream. Um, and when did you start paying attention to E3? Now is a good time as any, or as good a place as any for your remembrances of E3's past. What what did you think was really? What moments were really cool and you glad you watched live on the live stream, or what things? Did you had you wish you had a chance to been to see fresh and not have um, advanced notice on or that sort of thing before watching an archive live stream? Go ahead and post in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe, and also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.